People pay content creators like myself to move runes on their account, and I'm happy to do so. However, I've heard before and agree with the sentiment that you can save yourself the money by simply doing it yourself. There is an endless amount of guides on YouTube and Reddit that will answer any questions you ever have about the game, but despite this, people have their reasons for wanting to pay someone else to do it for them. The main reason, I think, is simply time, which I get our time is valuable, so if you have the means to pay someone else for their time, by all means, go for it. I'm happy to do so. But for those I would want an account revamp but don't have the means to pay for one, the goal of these next two videos is to give you some standard operating procedures and tips and tricks that will hopefully make it go smoother for you whenever you decide to take a Saturday to fix up your disorganized account. I'll add a quick disclaimer that I understand people are at different stages of the game and have different priorities within the game, but I did my best to make this procedure apply to everyone and added timestamps in the video to help y'all out. Step one is to give yourself an account review. For those that don't know, an account review is when a content creator logs into your account and roasts you for having a small PP. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, this is exactly what you're not supposed to do, okay? Now looking at the runes, this is where I'm going to start saying that everything's bad, because it is. For real though, an account review is simply taking the time to find out generally where you are in the game. If someone like myself is doing this service for you, they would then provide you with recommendations on next steps to progress and improve. That said, if you ask me, an account review should really be done by the owner of the account, because the entire goal of the process is to determine your priorities. I think it's safe to say that Summoner's War players enjoy different aspects of the game, whether it be siege, RTA, arena rushing, or simply farming and monster collection. If you pay me for an account review, my siege bias is bound to come out, and if you don't really care for siege, then it's not going to be that helpful for you. So how do you give yourself an account review? Step one is to look at your profile record. This is commonly the first thing I see any Summoner's War YouTuber do when logging into someone else's account. It's a great tool that gives you a snapshot of everything, which is perfect for trying to determine what your priorities should be. This is the part of the video where different viewers are likely to skip around the video because our profile records can vary widely depending on where we are in the game. So I'll start with an example early game profile and work my way up. Please understand the terms early, mid, and late game are all ambiguous, so different people will define them in many different ways with plenty of gray area. I'm going to define early game as someone that can not yet farm all areas of the game comfortably. This includes all Kairos dungeons, TOA normal and hard, R5, etc. Basically every area that isn't PvP that people farm for runes, artifacts, and other various rewards except for TOA help. The typical recommended order of things to accomplish from beginner to the end of early game without going into too much detail is as follows. Complete Summoner's Way quests to get your hands on as much free items as possible. As you're doing these quests, you'll work your way up to farming giants B10 religiously, using a starting team like Sigmaris, Veramos, Fran, Lapis, Bernard, for example. It shouldn't be long after farming giants B10 that you'll be able to farm giants B12 consistently, again with a starting team like Sigmaris, Fran, Lauren, Second Awakened Crow, and Shannon. After Giants B12, make a starter team for Dragons B12, then Necro B10, then Steel Fortress B7, and lastly Punisher B7. Check out this user's progression in only 9 days for example. Farm these areas for a while, especially Giants and Dragons B12 to upgrade your runes. While auto farming these areas, use every arena wing you get, win or lose, to farm for the weekly Devilmon and begin progressing your arena towers. I really want to emphasize the importance of building and upgrading your arena towers because it is essential for your progression. The universal 20% increase to all those stats is just, it's too huge to pass up. Additionally, join a newbie farming guild ASAP for easy guild points and use those points to buy and upgrade your guild flags. While auto farming, you should work on TOA with a starter team like Beretta, Mav, Lapis, Colleen, and Spectra. Essentially, you want to 6 star and 2nd awaken units that progress towards completing other areas of the game while you auto farm in Giants and Dragons. Silo R5 is probably the most difficult area to successfully farm in early game, but it's something I think you should pursue even early on because the grinds you get from there will help you progress to better dungeon teams like Trikaru. The reason I wanted to lay out this somewhat chronological order of things to pursue in the early game is to help give you a plan. If you fall into my definition of early game, then where in this timeline of things I just mentioned are you? Is there any area you can't farm consistently yet? If the answer is yes, then you now have determined what your priorities should be. For example, if you said, yes, I still can't farm Solar 5, then you should pursue Solar 5 by farming Giants and Dragons B12 while simultaneously six starring and second awakening units that work well there. I'll add a link here to to my beginner solar 5 video where I make a long list of monsters that I think are great for an early game solar 5. I'm going to define mid game as the time between completely farming all areas of the game and having dozens of units built to compete in PvP. Essentially this is where you're farming all areas all day every day to improve your teams, build new ones, and increase
increase your rune depth. I realize this definition is somewhat flawed since this technically never ends, but I'm operating under the assumption that so far all you've done has completed farming teams, while barely tipping your toes into all areas of PvP. If you fall into my definition of mid-game, then you have a very long list of priorities, and it can be overwhelming to decide which to pursue. This list can include improving or optimizing dungeon teams for various advantages, like building Chikaru, maxing your arena and guild towers and flags, which you should have begun in early game, but continue to complete in mid-game, six-starring and ruining dozens of monsters to improve your PvP performance, and maybe pursuing TOA hell for some additional rewards each month. Determining your priorities in mid-game is certainly difficult, but the good news is there's really no wrong answers. Ask yourself what you're interested in. If Siege is your favorite content, then you should be farming dragons non-stop for violent rune depth while building an endless supply of dupe monsters. If you're from the EU server, farm giants religiously to improve your swift sets and enjoy your time rushing arena. Your strategy should remain the same no matter what your interest is. Simply build units while auto farming. One complaint in Summoner's War that I think will continue throughout the existence of this game is uh, rune drops. People complain about rune drops all the time, and I think it's somewhat invalid, especially if you're mid-game. Uh, there's a good post by At Atreve on Reddit, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, but he says how long does it take to get one good rune, and his answer is you get a couple of good runes in eight hours of daily farming. Now, you will probably instantly want to call bullshit on this, but give it a read. It's a good post. He discusses the importance of like actually farming and then rune management itself and gives a little bit of uh, tidbits and misconceptions about the game and provides an example of a rune that he's sure most people would sell. And he powers it up from, you know, being a six star blue to plus 12 to grinding it and it actually looks like a pretty good rune that I'm sure most people would use even in the end game. And G3 players, or at least they claim to be G3 players, comment, you know, seconding what he's saying. All right, well, congratulations on making it to late game Summoner's War. What's wrong with you? I'm going to define late game as being able to farm all areas consistently and compete at some level in all areas of PvP, or at least all areas you're interested in. I think like mid game, there are no wrong answers in determining your priorities here. You should just continue to do the same thing you've always done, slowly but surely improving your account and yourself in the areas you're interested in. Honestly, late game players shouldn't have a need for an account review. An account revamp, however, is a whole nother story, so my next video will be all about account management. So just to recap, in step one you determined where you are currently in the game because you need to to determine what your priorities should be. Once you've determined your priorities, the next step is to simply write them down. Humans are really great at generating ideas but horrible at storing those ideas. That's why scientists keep a lab notebook, for example. You may find it annoying when you're in school, but there's sometimes a reason to learn what you're learning. There are many different ways to keep a to-do list. I personally use Google Docs because it syncs across all my devices so I can edit it on my phone or laptop from anywhere as long as I have an internet connection. I just make bullet points and sub bullet points and once I complete a task I delete it to remove clutter. If you're old-fashioned you can keep a notebook with pen and paper. It's entirely up to you how you want to do it, but the point is to make a plan. So just as an example, let's say Say you're in my definition of early game where you still can't farm solo r5 reliably in that case i would write something down both specific and actionable like build solo r5 by well, it's july 16th right now i'll say august 16th like actually put a timeline give yourself a timeline let's do a bullet point and say our first task research watch videos figure out what to build Something like that. So you'll spend a good hour or something watching videos on YouTube, looking at stuff on Reddit to figure out what exactly you should do. Once you accomplish that task, you can delete it. Boom, it's gone. But now you have new information like, all right, we want to build and second awaken Naomi. Probably one of the most difficult monsters to build for solo R5 is Bailiger. Usually you need a, you know, a decent rage set on him. So I'll say arm necro for rage and will runes or bail. So we want to do this in about four weeks. So we'll give us one week of farming necro nonstop for a rage set. And really, you can do blue runes. It'll, it'll work fine with blue runes. And you don't even necessarily need rage. I was using a, a double will blade on Bailiger for a long time, and that worked just fine for me. Sounds difficult, but it, it really shouldn't be that difficult. Any rune set can do well in R5. You don't need good violent runes or anything like that. All right, so I just fast forwarded a bit, just making a, a list like this. I guess I should delete the, the research starter teams I can build. So we did that. We got this information. 
and now here are the things that I need to accomplish. You have one week while you're auto farming, you can pop a double XP to work on six starring things. You can use your dimensional hole energy to work on second awakening, Naomi or Crow. Just give yourself a timeline, be like, all right, week one, I'm doing this. Week two, I'm doing this. Week three, I'm doing that. Week four, I'm doing this. And then I'm going to put the team together and see how it works. And I would not be surprised at all if you were farming consistently, playing consistently and doing these things that you'll have a solo R5 team within a month. Maybe this is ideal to some people. Maybe some people only farm an hour a day or something and don't play that often. That's fine. Just give yourself more time. But I think giving yourself a timeline is important because it holds you accountable. And again, once you accomplish a task, what I do is just delete the bullet point to remove the clutter. My personal to-do list is full of stuff as you can see i uh, write my scripts and that kind of thing on my to-do list i keep everything in one place that way i uh, don't have to navigate to all these different things to get where i want to go and i even put my like yearly goals and things over here to the bottom so i have like 2022 goals 2023 goals that kind of thing and i just I don't know, keep a to-do list. It's even my like home screen. So whenever I open up the internet, it doesn't bring me straight to YouTube. It brings me straight to my to-do list so I can see, hey, here are still things that I need to get done. I think this is something that has really helped me in increasing my productivity as someone that has a full-time job, does YouTube on the side and video editing on the side. I, I just work a lot. I say it work, but like I really enjoy YouTube and I really enjoy video editing. So it's just like a hobby that happens to be monetizable. Is that a word? I think uh, any means you can increase your productivity and optimize your time is great because we only have so much time. So this is something that helps me. So in summary, give yourself an account review first to determine what your priorities should be, then write down what those priorities are. Choose one and pursue it. Early game players are really the only ones that have a somewhat established timeline to follow, but Summoner's War doesn't have like an exact yellow brick road to follow to a T. There's more than one way to play this game, and it's important that you do what you enjoy. This is a game first and foremost, so if you're not having fun, quit playing. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next video to cover rune management.